In this video, we will continue our discussion of built-up members by discussing shear flow. Just to quickly recap, built-up members are made of different components that are fully bonded together as a composite shape. Because they are bonded, shear stresses are transferred between the components because they act as one unit. We have just learned that this transfer of shear stress between components results in lower stresses and smaller deflections. By bonding the components together, we mean that we are preventing the different parts of the built-up section from sliding relative to each other, and the sliding action is also known as slip. We usually bond components together using some kind of bonding agent, such as fasteners, welds, or glue. So to prevent the slip between components, we need to know the magnitude of the shear force that needs to be resisted by the bonding agents, so the fasteners, the welds, or the glue, along with the length of each part. Just to illustrate that here, we have beam section from some beam. That is under transverse loading. And this beam is a built up member from three boards that are bonded together. On the face of this cut, the section experiences a transverse internal shear force. As we have previously learned before, so that is equal to tau, which is equal to VQ over IT. And now we make another cut that separates the boards. As we can see here, the boards are separated. There should be a longitudinal shear stress on the face of this cut due to equilibrium. So equilibrium says that we should have equal and opposite forces. So on this face, we should have forces running in this direction. And on the other side of the cut, we should have force running in the opposite direction. And for this beam to be a composite, the longitudinal shear stresses between the boards must be transferred. And from what we just discussed, this longitudinal shear must be resisted by some kind of bonding agent over the area of the longitudinal cut. And now we can talk about the longitudinal shear force on the interface area. The interface area is now between the two boards and within a length of L. So the longitudinal shear force acting on the interface is calculated within a length of L. We can call this VL. And this is equal to the shear stress, because these have to be equal. And this is evaluated over the area of the interface, which is L. And then we can call the width of the beam T. So that's tau LT. Tau we know is VQ over IT times LT. This results in VQ over I times L. And this has units of force. So if we take the shear force and present it as a shear force per unit length, you can write VL over L, which simplifies to VQ over I. And we can call that Q, which is shear flow. And shear flow is in units of force per length. So in SI, typical units would be newton per millimeter, kilonewton per meter, or in imperial, we would have pounds per inches. Now looking at our equation for shear flow, which is Q equals VQ 
over i, we can see that we need v, q, and i. And these are actually the same values that we calculated previously for the shear formula trying to find the transverse shear. So v is, again, the internal shear force at the section. And we can find this using a shear force diagram or the method of sections. I is the moment of inertia of the tire section. Q, we know, was the integral of y over some section area a prime, which evaluates to y prime part times a prime. And this should all be familiar from the shear formula module. If y is the location where now shear flow has to be calculated, then A prime is the cross-sectional area of the segment that is connected at this location, and Y prime bar is the difference between the centroid of this full section and the centroid of A prime. So we can illustrate this below in three quick examples. First, we have a simple built-up rectangular B made from three boards that are glued together. And we want to find the shear flow at, at point Y which is the interface between the two boards. This is essentially finding the transverse shear stress at point Y, equating it to the longitudinal shear stress, and then expressing it as a force per unit length term in the longitudinal direction. So remembering back to transverse shear, we then make a cut at point Y. Here, it's actually the interface between two of the boards, and then section the area at the cut, and call that A prime. And then the corresponding difference in centroids we call y prime bar. So then now we can go ahead and find q, which will be here, at the interface between the two boards. And q is the shear force per unit length that must be resisted by the glue so that be this beam acts as a composite section. So we can use A prime to find Q, which is for glue. In our second example, we have a built-up T-beam where the web and the flange are two different components and they are held together by welds on either side of the web. So here, if our point of interest is at the interface between the web and the flange, so the interface between the two components, Saying that's the neutral axis, then this would be our y. And then our flange area could be called as a prime, and we can also find y prime bar. And this should give us a value of q for this interface. So again, a prime you can use to find q. Here it's for welds. Lastly, we have this built-up section where there are two horizontal components and two vertical components, and they are all welded together. At the top, if we call this top flange A prime 1, then we can find the corresponding shear flow Q1 for that interface. And since there are two points of contact, the shear flow at each point of contact is half of the total, so that's Q1 over 2. And similarly, at the horizontal component at mid-height, that's right here, that's called A prime 2. Then the shear flow experienced at each of the contact points, again, will be half of the total. So that would be Q2 divided by 2. And know that we have to use A prime 1 to calculate Q1 and A prime 2 to calculate Q2. So now that we've discussed how to calculate shear flow, Q, we need to know how this pertains to specific types of bonding agents. So we have fasteners, such as bolts and nails, we have glue, and we have welds, and they all behave differently. First, let's discuss bolts and nails. 
each bolt can resist a specified shear force. And the shear flow that bolts or nails can resist is the shear strength of one bolt over the bolt spacing. So F bolt is the shear strength of one bolt and S is the bolt or nail spacing. Usually for design, we are given the strength of a single bolt and we know the shear flow that is required to be resisted in the beam. So we typically solve for the required spacing. So that's S required and that's simply rearranging this for F bolt over the Q required. And then we can move on to glue, which behaves a little differently. Glue works differently from nails and bolts because the shear flow is carried over a surface instead of a contact points. So instead, we discuss glue with respect to a bond strength per unit area because it's applied over a surface. So the shear flow that is required is simply the glue bond strength times the width of the glued area. So here tau glue is the glue bond strength and B glue is the width of the glued area. So we solve for B glued which is simply Q required divided by the glue bond strength. And last but not least, we have welds. And welds run longitudinally with a beam. For example, if we have an inverted T section, and our web and flange are actually two different components in a built up member and we want to weld this together. So in our section, it would look like here and here. This weld would actually extend along the length of the beam. So the shear strength of the weld is given as a shear force per unit length. So now we can simply equate the required shear flow with the shear strength of the weld. And for design, we usually look for the width of the weld or the length of weld and the weld can itself can be continuous or it can be intermittent. So now let's summarize what we have just learned. For a built-up member to display composite action, shear stress has to be transferred between components. We can express the longitudinal shear stress as a force per unit length and call the shear flow. So the way we determine the variables in shear flow, V, Q, and I, the internal shear force, Q, and the moment of inertia are identical to how we determine them for the transfer shear. We are interested in finding the shear flow at interfaces between components of a built-up member. This is because our bonding agent, whether it be nails or bolts, glue or welds, must be designed to resist the shear flow. In design, we typically control the spacing of the bolts and nails, the width of the glued area, or the width and length of the welds.